Pink Floyd has been my favorite band for a few years now, and I know a lot of people can say the same. They've made some of the biggest and most critically acclaimed albums of all time, they have so many mega hits, and they're one of the most influential groups for music ever. Roger Waters, David Gilmour, Richard Wright, and Nick Mason formed the core group of Pink Floyd that would make music for decades constantly revolutionizing their music with each project. I'll make another video talking about their albums in full, but today we are painting my top 10 favorite songs from them. If you've never seen one of these before, basically I take an artist I like and make 10 unique artworks for each of my 10 favorite songs by them. I've done lists on Frank Ocean, Tyler the Creator, The Weeknd, Kendrick Lamar, and now Floyd. A bit of a departure from the previous artists, but I've grown up listening to Pink Floyd for a long time now, and they are a part of why I love music so much. I know I say this every time, but this was easily the hardest list yet. And not in terms of creating the list, but for this series, I decided to only do paintings, when normally I do a mix of either digital art or traditional art. Only paintings for this one, which took a lot longer than I wanted to. I started the first painting on June 25th, and I finished the last one on August 27th. More than two months of time went into these, but God was it worth it. Before we get in, what are your top 10 Pink Floyd songs? Let me know in the comments, and also this whole list is my opinion. I'm sure my takes are going to make the elitist Pink Floyd fans angry, but I don't really give a shit. These songs are all unreal, and ranking them was very difficult, but I like my ranking still. Alright, alright. Enough waffling. Let's get into the list. My list starts off with one of the band's most recognizable and popular tracks, Wish You Were Here. Wish You Were Here is a song I've grown up with for a long time, and it's one that I hold very close to me. It's very stripped back compared to most Pink Floyd songs, but it makes for one of their most beautiful songs. A track that has many meanings, but one way I interpret it is when you're longing for someone you used to be close with, but they're not within reach. You just wish they were here with you. Obviously, it's about more than that. Sid Barrett is the main point of the whole album, but I don't really want to give you guys a history lesson on Pink Floyd right now. There's plenty of videos that you can watch for that. For this painting, though, I wanted to pay homage to the album cover for Wish You Were Here, one of the most iconic album covers we've ever seen that is still being recreated today. <clears throat> Metro Boomin. I really like this piece. The colors look amazing, and the different brushstrokes and textures I think make it really come together well. I was really struggling though to find my footing with what I wanted to do with these paintings because usually I have a cohesive aesthetic to all of them, but it took me a couple paintings to really find that for this collection, but I still really like this one. Um, I love the background. I've been using that type of texture and like style on a couple of my paintings lately and I really like how it looks it's it's just the way that the colors shift in it it's really cool and I like it a lot overall a great way to start this list why should I be afraid of dying there's no reason for it you've got to go sometime My number 9 is The Great Gig in the Sky, and it is the fifth track on Dark Side of the Moon, and it's probably Pink Floyd's most euphoric song, at least one of their most euphoric tracks. There's no lyrics really, just the great Claire Torrey, shout out to her, going insane on vocals for 4 plus minutes. This song is just an eargasm, and that's the main reason why it's in my top 10. 
But the themes of mortality and fearing death fit right into Dark Side's story. That's also why I chose A Church. It's a very holy sounding song, and the image of a church is the only thing that came to mind when thinking of what to paint. All in all though, I really like this piece once again. The spectrum of colors flowing out from behind creates some really cool movement, and the colors themselves also look really nice. I like it a lot. And this gave me the idea for how I wanted to tackle the dark side paintings for this, because there's plenty more. <laughs> just, just wait. Um, but I was still kind of lost on what I wanted to do for the entire collection. That was until the next painting. Take It Back is in my top 10. Yep. Uh, if you're a casual Pink Floyd fan, you've probably never heard the song, which is a crime. This song is phenomenal, and I have seen no one talk about it. Ever. Now, apparently the song is about Mother Nature and how she can take it back, which I don't entirely understand, but whatever. I'm not really focusing on this song for lyrical content. It's about the sounds, brother. For this painting, I wanted to include the Division Bell heads in a peaceful plane. Spoiler alert, this is the only song from Division Bell on my list, so I wanted to make a tribute for it. It's a really cool album cover that I like a lot. And I'm gonna be straight up. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorite artworks I have ever done. It took me five days or so, and I almost quit so many times the sky the grass the statues it's it's all perfect for me I, I love it this piece also gave me the juice to really spend my time with this series and make the best paintings i possibly could it it really just it drove me to do this series all the way through because i was really contemplating just stopping it here but i i put my everything into these babies and god it was so worth it this also made me realize how much i love painting because there's an ugly phase you have to go through where it looks really bad and that happened a lot in this piece but you just you gotta keep pushing and working at it it's so fucking rewarding when it's done when you get something like this especially when you're just trudging through that ugly phase it just makes me realize how much i love doing art and that's why i do it is for the rewarding aspect of it and the end product every time and this is definitely a prime example of that so take it back number eight Money is one of the most popular Pink Floyd songs, and another one I've grown up with for a long time, hearing it constantly. Money is all about how it can affect people and the world as a whole, that is money. It's a very surface level look at the song, but I don't got time to write an essay about it. Point is, it sounds amazing. The sax shines on this track, and the groove of money is so smooth. The bass, the sax again, the guitar solos, it's just so good. Pink Floyd's music is so special to me because of the ebbs and flows their songs go through. They really take you through a sonic journey, and there's, there's valleys, there's highs, there's lows. It's a journey. Most of their songs are a full-on journey, and... There's a path that money takes, and it sounds impeccable. For the painting, I wanted to keep the dark side theme going, but make it look really groovy and like 70s inspired, 
I also implemented the industrial aspect that money has and overall I love this piece. The rainbow looks fucking incredible and the money signs inside are my favorite part. I really really like that touch to it and a great painting for a great song. Another one of Pink Floyd's mega hits makes my list, another Brick in the Wall Part 2 being the song this time, and I know I've said this before, but I grew up listening to the song an unholy amount. It was a given to make my list, but it was kind of hard to find a spot for it. The song is about the main character of Pink Floyd's The Wall album Pink and his traumatic experiences in his school. The whole Another Brick in the Wall message is one of the most integral pieces in the Wall story, and Part 2 is easily my favorite. I do like Part 1 though, Part 1's pretty cool. Part 3 is also pretty cool too, now that I think about it. The children singing the chorus is iconic, and the guitar solo is so smooth, and it sounds amazing. For the painting, I wanted the view from inside the wall, and looking above it to this beautiful landscape that you're trapped behind. The wall represents a mental wall that's built up by your own experiences and thoughts and trauma, like the school teacher in Pink's case. We'll see what happens to this wall in a second, but I love this painting. It's a little similar to the Take It Back one, but I don't care. It looks good, and I like it. What a beautiful wall. It'd be a shame if something were to happen to it. Us and Them is another entry from Dark Side on my list. I really like Dark Side of the Moon. And this is easily one of my favorites, for sure. Us and Them is about war and how detrimental it can be to the human race. Uh, again, a very surface level look out of it, but that's a general concept, I'd say. This is one of the best sounding songs from Pink Floyd, in my opinion, especially when the song erupts into an ocean of sounds in the chorus. It's just... Again, just so euphoric. The amount of sound, it's just, it's an eargasm, again. It's a very beautiful song, which juxtaposes what the song is about. Um, but again, the sax just shines on this song, and the chorus, unreal. I also love just, like, the instrumental groove that this song has. Is ugh, I love it. I love it so much. Sticking with the dark side palette, I wanted to take the wall from the last painting and have it be broken down and destroyed uh, to fit the theme of this song. And I really like how this pairs up with the another brick on the wall painting. Uh, and also the colors, just chef's kiss. I've also never done anything like pairing two artworks together in a series, but I thought that in this case, it would be a sick ass idea to have the wall be broken down and it just, it fit too perfectly with this song. So I definitely do want to do more things like this because I think it's really cool. And when I first thought of this idea, oh, I, I knew I had to do it. No matter how, just like how risky of an idea it is to, because lining these up is really hard. Just like trying to uh, find symmetry with them. 
it, it was tough. It was tough. It was a hard painting to kind of like redo almost, but I really like it. I like the wall, how it looks. Uh, I like the tank. And again, the colors just look so good. I love this one. And it's a good way to kick off the top five for this Pink Floyd list. Yeah, um, Echoes is number four. <laughs> it might piss a lot of people off. I know that this is a favorite for many, many, many Pink Floyd fans, and I get it, I get it, but I'll get to why I have this kind of lower than most people. Echoes is an auditory experience from the album Metal, and it closes out that album with a 23-minute unforgettable ride. Yeah, 23 minutes. Uh Easily the longest song on here, and probably the longest song I have ever heard. This is what I mean about how Pink Floyd has ebbs and flows in their music though, because of songs like this. Echoes goes through so many phases and interludes, and I love pretty much every second of it, almost. If you want to know more about the song and the origin and story of it, I would highly recommend Polyphonic's video on it. It's one of my favorite YouTube videos ever. It, the visuals in it are just so crazy, and he does a very good job of telling the story of Echoes, and it'll be linked in the description. Each band member is at their best pretty much on this song, with Nick Mason's amazing drum work. Richard Wright's incredible keys at one point sound great. Roger Waters' bass is amazing on here, and David Gilmore steals the show with his out of this world guitar solos throughout. He also uses his guitar to make very eerie and off-putting sounds at one point where I think the song goes down to the bottom of the ocean. This is the one part that I don't like about the song and it kind of drags it down a little bit. The main reason why it's at four is because it's such a long song. Like I rarely listen to Echoes. I rarely do. I listened to it a few times while doing this series, but it's just, it's, it's a ride. You have to be like prepared to listen to Echoes almost. But I feel like this is the start of Pink Floyd really finding their sound and their groove. Uh, and I'll get to that more in their discography ranking video, but it feels like the first few albums before Dark Side were like stepping stones to finding that sound for the band. And... Echoes is definitely a monumental piece in their discography that was a massive step towards finding that incredible sound for their four album run in the 70s. And I wanted to really make the ocean the focal point of this painting. Uh, Echoes has an incredible atmosphere and again the iconic sonar ping is one of my favorite things in it. And overall, man, I fucking love this painting so much. And I finished it really quick too, which makes me happy. I did it in like six hours or so probably, which compared to the other ones, that's very fast. I think the colors are great, the texture is cool, and I love the echoed effect of the O in the text. And I also love how it looks like a school of fish swimming around the painting in certain spots. I really like that, like, I want to live in this painting, it just, it's such a calming image to look at for me, and I just, I could not be more happy with it, it's so cool for this song, and I love it a lot.
Dogs is another long ass song from the album Animals this time. Uh, Dogs clocks in at a little over 17 minutes, but once again, pretty much every second is perfect. Animals as a whole album is easily one of my favorites from Pink Floyd, and this song is a pretty big reason why. The concept of animals is loosely based on George Orwell's Animal Farm, which is about different classes of people in a society represented by animals. The dogs in particular in this case represent ruthless businessmen who abuse their power for their own purposes. I think the entire concept of the album is crazy, but I'm just going to focus on this song, and I think this is the best the whole band has sounded together. Like, I know I said that pretty much about Echoes, but dogs, like... They are on another level. Each member holds their own and exceeds it at multiple times, especially David Gilmour once again. His solos on this track are fucking unreal, and I love how euphoric they sound when they explode through the dark atmosphere of the song. And for this painting, I wanted to capture the aesthetic of animals and the dark atmosphere by making this a POV shot of an alleyway with a creepy little dog waiting at the end of it. I have had this painting idea in my head for months now, and it's really what got me going on this series. Like, uh, when I first thought of this painting, I this is what made me want to do a Pink Floyd Top 10. With that being said, I'm a little bit disappointed in this one, I'm not going to lie. I had to go to Photoshop to make it look a little bit better. But I don't think it's a bad painting, it's just not exactly how I pictured it in my head, or like how I wanted it to look. I think honestly, in a couple years or so, I might revisit this concept and see if I could do it better, because it's giving me those vibes. I just think some parts look really muddied in it, and it's a little bit, um, uh, desaturated, I guess is the word. It's not as vibrant as I wanted it to look, which... The Photoshop version makes it look a lot better, but I still like it. It's grown on me more since I've painted it, but a little bit disappointed from it. Just a little bit. Yeah, every fucking time I play this song, it, it wakes me up every time. I just... Whew. Sorry, I, I got too into myself there. Um, time is the fourth track on Dark Side of the Moon, and it's the fourth song from Dark Side to make my list. Uh, and Time is... It's one of my all-time favorite songs ever. It is quintessential Pink Floyd. I've mentioned before about ebbs and flows in their music, but there's also another side of that coin where Pink Floyd takes you to another dimension and time is a prime example of that there's so many deep meanings in this track and paired with the entire band playing their asses off easily makes this one of the greatest songs of all time time moves fast and sometimes it can slip away without you realizing it and that applies to both real life and the song I feel this constantly when remembering things of my past but realizing it happened years ago. It's really jarring for me. It really is. It just, it puts things into perspective and I always think about how my entire life can change in a second and I'm just ticking away time until something happens, whether it's something with my family or my friends or something else. Time haunts me. And the concept of time is insane in itself. And it's a very complicated concept, which is why I pivoted from that for the artwork, leaning more towards the sonic soundscape for the song. Just very trippy. Very, very trippy. And I love it. I love the image of the constant triangles, the like dark side triangles and the Illuminati eye in the middle so cool and just the flowing colors around it i just i love this painting so fucking much and this is another one that like barely took me any time also so love that 
yeah as i get older this song just it hits more and more and it's a song that means a very great deal to me and also david gilmore's guitar solo unreal if you couldn't tell already uh he's probably my favorite member of the band his guitar is just like how how is he so good at it how My favorite Pink Floyd song is and always will be Comfortably Numb. And it's also very, very high on my favorite songs ever list. This song is about the character on the wall album Pink being treated by doctors because of his mind state. It, it's hard to kind of explain the song without the context of the whole album. Um, but basically, he's in a very numb state of mind. He's just completely out of it. He's lost all touch with reality, and the doctors are giving him drugs to make him feel better and to be able to perform at a show that he's performing at. At least I think that's what it's about. I'm pretty positive that's what the song's about. That's not the reason why I love this song, though. Honestly, it's mainly because of the two un fucking real guitar solos they ascend me to another plane of existence every single time i listen to the song without fail this is the definition of eargasm the story is cool but the solos are the biggest reason why this is here but i also have a very special attachment to this song I remember sitting in my STEM class in 7th grade, it's basically just like a computer class, and I was just listening to music, just jamming out, I would always play like solitaire all the time during this time, and I was really discovering what I liked to listen to during that year. I would listen to Queen, Led Zeppelin, a little Eminem here and there, but I remember clicking on this song, and the thumbnail was of Dark Side. it wasn't even the Wall album cover. And I don't remember hearing the song before, at least I like don't recall the name Comfortably Numb, but hearing the song, honestly, it, it changed my life. Listening to the song made me realize how powerful music can be, and it got me into listening to music all the time and just and making that a hobby of mine. And Pink Floyd as a whole changed how I see music, and... Consuming music is now one of my favorite things to do in my life period. And it feeds right into my number one passion of creating art as well. I'll never forget that time in seventh grade because it changed me forever. It really did. And for this final painting, I took one of the artworks from the Wall movie and added my little trippy touches to it to make this. And this is also the biggest painting I've done. It's not like that much bigger compared to the other ones, but God, I fucking love it so much. It looks like a metal poster, which wasn't my intention, but it looks really badass. And I also used my eyes as a reference for the eyeballs on the picture, just a little bit. Um, and yeah, I like it a lot. It's a little bit more abstract than I wanted it to be. Um, the Crow also is kind of inspired from the Wall movie. Uh, I wanted to like really hover over the piece and like have a very ominous aspect to it, but it just kind of turned into it just soaring above the painting, which I don't mind. It looks cool at least. I mainly just wanted it to 
represent how I imagine the guitar solo like looking on the song. Just a uh, you just a massive amount of sound and just David Gilmore's guitar. It's just it's so good and it just rips through the soundscape of the song so well. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying anymore. I'm tired, bro. Come on. Either way, I like the song, and, well, I love the song, but I really like the painting a lot, and, yeah, this, this is a, this is a number one that I'll definitely hold very close to my heart for a long time. And that's it. Finally. Two months of this shit, man. Two fucking months. This is the longest I've spent on an art series in a long time, but doing this series, it felt like a monumental moment for me in my art journey. And overall, just my life journey, honestly. This year has been a roller coaster again for me. I'm about to get a little bit personal here, just letting you guys know. Um, I've been on this medication called Accutane, which is for acne. It's a really rigorous process to go through that has plagued me for the past, like, six plus months. And one of the side effects is depression. So you can imagine how I've been feeling lately. I had a fallout with one of my friends because of it, and, uh, it impacted, it, it impacted me in a, in a big way, but once that happened, I pretty much just put everything into this series. All of my sadness, all of my anger, all of my happiness, all of it went into these pieces. And part of me felt, and part of me felt like I needed this collection to be my best for me to prove to myself that I can do something like this and that I am good at art and that I can do it. And fuck, man, I. I'd say I did it. I'd say I did it. These are some of my favorite artworks I've ever made, and they all feel like a piece of me. And while doing this series, I've been focusing more on myself and trying to learn how to love myself more and more. And along with this series, it's been a really good healing process for me. I'm a lot better now than before already, and hopefully I can just keep going on that trajectory because self-love is very important. And it's something that I've neglected about myself for a very long time. Um, so yeah, just everybody watching this video, just make sure you love yourself, man. Self-care is a very important thing, and you don't want to neglect that about yourself. Anyway, um, my favorite paintings were Wish You Were Here, uh, Take It Back easily is one of my favorites. One of my all-time favorite paintings, honestly. Uh, Echoes looks fucking amazing. Comfortably Numb is cool too, but honestly, I think Time might be my favorite. I think either Time or Take It Back. I just, I really like the image of the dark side triangles with the all-seeing eye, and yeah, it's just, the numbers also really look, like, really cool too. I like it a lot. I don't know, I love them all, honestly, but which ones are your guys' favorites? I want to know. And also, I'm actually going to focus on making videos for a while. Um, and I know I say that after pretty much all of my videos, and I never end up doing it. But this time, I actually will. Because two months straight of painting, it's its really fucking exhausting. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So I kind of want to take a break from art for a little bit and focus on this more. Uh, I've got some more Discog rankings, including Pink Floyd. That'll probably be my next video after this. And I've got some other ideas in the works, too. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you somehow made it all the way to the end of this video, uh, please like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, I'll hopefully see you guys on the next video. Peace out.